And the Bears on the field, as are the Horns. And the question for Texas, defensively, do they have the talent? And maybe more importantly, do they have the depth yeah. to get through this game against this 100-mile-an-hour offense for Baylor? I'll answer that second question first. Yes, they have the talent. Do they have the depth? I don't know. That's the big question. But when you start talking about what they can do up front, look no further than Malcolm Brown, number 90 on the inside. This is a powerful man, and he can change the game. He just has to be not worn out. And guess what? He's got a guy right next to him, Hassan Ridgeway, who's just as capable. Both those guys can control the inside, and if they can use those guys and play with a light box, and we'll explain that, there's a chance here for Texas. Don't go away. Historically, a series dominated by Texas. Recently, though, Baylor has crashed the Big 12 party. The defending conference champions taking on Texas in Austin in just a moment. For drivers like these who demand the most from their tires. And everything we've learned making these tires inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. and Baylor. Bob Wachusen, Matt Millen just about set for kickoff. Quint Kesnick is with us here as well. And Quint, important additions for both sides on these rosters today. Well, Texas adds just to Jay Johnson to their lineup today. The, you know, superstar wide receiver running back suspended for the first four games of the season due to a violation of team rules. Reinstated by head coach Charlie Strong. He's in uniform. Now, what he represents is big play ability. Two years ago in this game, 2012, he took the first snap to the house. 84-yard touchdown run. He's got speed to stretch the defense. He's an all-purpose weapon. You'll see him utilized today. Push passes, jet sweeps, reverses screens, and on kick returns. And that is speed that Texas has been lacking. Only six plays this season of more than 30 yards. Jay Johnson represents big playability. And yeah, Matt, there's no question that Baylor has home run hitters. Texas, for all the talent we've always known the Longhorns to have, they don't really have a lot of that home run hitting capability for Charlie Strong. Now they get one of those home run hitters in DJ Johnson. Yeah, DJ Johnson represents an ability to be able to create big plays in space. And any way you can get them on the edge, whether it's a swing pass, whether it's a screen, whatever it is, Charlie Strong needs to take advantage of that. There's one of the best coaches in all this nation, Art Bryles. He is one of my favorite guys to watch. He's ahead of the curve. He's cutting edge, and he loves it. And his team will start with the football. Bebo's set to go. We're set to go. Texas won the toss and deferred their option. So the Horns will start with the ball in the third quarter. But it will be Baylor to start at their own 25-yard line. No chance for Lynx Hawthorne as the ball sails through the back of the end zone. So here comes a Heisman candidate in Bryce Petty, starting off the season with seven touchdowns against only one interception. And for his career, a young man that waited basically five years to finally get his chance to be the franchise quarterback for a big-time collegiate program. He's got 40 touchdowns against only four interceptions. Folks, what's most important and impressive about Bryce Petty is this. He didn't waste that time waiting, waiting for his chance. He learned everything about the offense. He was diligent and he was purposeful in how he approached it and it's paying dividends now. And he has all his weapons back as well. Corey Coleman, Antoine Goodley, Clay Fuller, Levi Norwood, all healthy and set to play today. And an impact play already made by the front for Texas defensively. No gain on first round. Jordan Hicks has to be big today well, for the Horns. Yeah, absolutely. And he's in the middle of it right there. And you're going to see Jordan Hicks and hear him a lot. But those two running backs, Goodwood and Jefferson, 
They've got to be able to produce something. This is a passing offense, make no mistake about it. They'll run it on second down. And moving the pile inward. Now to about the 30-yard line or so. So it's Steve Edmond making the stop for Texas. Brings up an early third down for Baylor from just shy of their own 30-yard line. This is where they spread the field horizontally. They make you defend the whole field. Texas needs to be able to handle all this inside with just five guys. That is what we would call a light box. They have six in there, but eventually they'll get to five. Petty outside. Finds Norwood right at the sticks. He might be a half yard shy. I think he's short. Levi Norwood, by the nose of the football, is shy of the first down. Fourth down and a foot for Baylor. Will they go for it from their own 35-yard line? The answer is yes. Keep in mind, they don't usually bring the big boys in, but here they come. This is one of the things that's tough. This is very rare do they ever get to short yardage and goal line. It's under further review. They're going to review whether or not Levi Norwood made it to the first down marker. Now, it looked like he stepped out of bounds right where they marked the football. It has to be indisputable to overturn the ruling on the field. Needs to get to the 35. It's not where he is. It's where the ball is. Right. He Very hard it. to tell. He, well, he had it on the left side. It looked like it was a pretty good spot. He didn't, uh, he didn't extend it to the right side of his body. He kept it to the left middle part of his body, and it's, that's behind that line. I understand the need for replay, but a minute and five seconds into the game, you are going to the replay booth to review a spot that's a half foot shy well, of a first down. Well, they, they know you have a very tight connection at the end of this game, so <laughs> I told these officials to do whatever they have to do, make sure you take as long as you can. Right, they already got the message. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. It's fourth down. So now the true test, Sark Bryles knows that it is short of the first down. Does he leave his offense out there to go for it on fourth down from inside his own 35-yard line? Is this an unnecessary risk to take one minute into the game? What's well, interesting, he brings his big people out. They believe they can get themselves a half yard. It's going to be big on big. Let's see if they don't get it to Linwood here. Linwood right up the gut. Does he have it? Texas thinks they've got to stop. All right, look, look where that linesman's foot. This guy right here. See that H on his back? It's whatever foot he puts it on. And it just has to touch. That's a first down. So Texas goes from celebrating to putting their defense right back on the field. That's all on Linwood. That's a phenomenal effort by Linwood. He was hit in the backfield. Watch this. Off the edge. Right here. He gets hit. Now he keeps his balance and he actually uses his teammates to help him from not go going down. Teddy looking to escape. He loses a yard. This is an active front for Texas, and we know, man, they have talent. You saw it this week on tape. We watched every snap they've played so far this season. They make plays. It's just a question of do you get worn out playing 100 snaps against them? Also keep in mind, this is by far the most talented team that Texas has gone against. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Baylor has gone against to this point in the season. But this represents the best skill set that they would have gone uh, uh, played against. Gain of four on second down for Shock Linwood, so now it's third down and seven. There's the light box again inside. There's spray down. Four-man rush. Petty with a bullet to the first down marker. Retreating was Jay Lee, and they'll mark him down shy with a flag down as well. Now they move the ball ahead of the first down marker. Yeah, I thought, I think that's the right call. He, he caught the ball there, coming back to the ball, where he caught it was beyond the first down marker. Pass interference. Offense, number 32. 15-yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's a big spot, though, because had he been marked down a yard shy of the first down, Texas might have declined the penalty and forced fourth and one. That shocked Linwood up there out of the backfield. 
And that's, uh, that's, I don't get that call. So now it's third down and a mile for Baylor. They have to get to the 45 yard line for a first down. Texas is playing in his zone. They're going to lock to two. They're going to rush three. They barely get the snap off. They don't get it off. Delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. It's third down. So they showed a dropping eight and rushing three. And their thought there is make it a tight window. Make Bryce Petty have to throw it into a tight window. Informations like this. Now you gotta make the pack. Incomplete. Incomplete. A short hop to Antoine Goodley. And Baylor's gonna have to punt from inside their own 10 yard line. That's the exact outcome that Texas was hoping for. Texas says they need a fast start. But ironically, it's not a fast start from their offense. They need a fast start from their defense. They just got one. Well, they've got a young quarterback who is still growing on the job, very much so. And he's about to get the football with great field position. Jackson Shipley set to take this punt on a fair catch near midfield. Short punt. In plus territory. So we will step aside after only a 30-yard punt. Tyrone swoops of the horns on the field in Baylor territory when we come back. this week. First possession for Texas starts with a McIntyre cutback. And a pickup of about six and a half yards and a little bit of jawing after the play is over. Tyrone swoops. The sophomore from White Wright, Texas gets the start. At quarterback, of course, he replaces David Ash. Ash was to be the starter this season, but headaches and dizziness after the opener against North Texas, coupled with the fact that he missed 10 games last year with a head injury, forces him into a retirement from football. Swoops under some pressure. Second gotcha. down. Lobs it down the sideline. Coming back to adjust to the football was Brown. But he couldn't hold on. Avion Edwards was there in coverage. So an early third down for the sophomore in plus territory for Texas. The biggest thing that Tyrone Swoops will have to do is believe his eyes. He's at that stage right now where he sees it, but he doesn't quite believe it. Just on that last play, he had him on that wheel route. Let get rid of the ball. Just he's wide open. Throw it. He waited and allowed him to be covered, and it's an incompletion. He certainly has left some plays on the field, and a little late coming out of the huddle here. Play clock down to five. On third down and four. Play clock at two, and he has to call timeout. So again, the maturation process of a young quarterback. A little slow getting out of the huddle, so we'll step aside. Big third down coming up. ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by AT&T. Send hashtag X before you drive. No text is worth a life. It can wait. Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Barton Springs Pool, a man-made recreational pool in downtown Austin. Popular venue for year-round swimming. As its temperature maintains a narrow range from 68 degrees in the winter to about 72 in the summer. And while we were busy watching film yesterday, Matt Millen was taking a dip. <laughs> Third down and four after the timeout. Swoops, well protected, escapes the pocket. He'll run for it. And he's got the first down. Come on. Very important, but maybe unseen right there. The offensive line for Texas protected very well. They have been struggling mightily 
in this first part of the season. And against this defensive front, which I think is where they probably, where Baylor's probably the most improved, that's a great job of protection and allowing Swoops to get that first. And one of the biggest losses for Texas this season, Dominic Espinosa, the starting center, broke his ankle against North Texas to start the year. And around to Zay Jansen. Next ball picks up six. Well, check that five. It'll be second down and five as we take a look at our impact players. And this is that impact matchup, yeah. Matt, that you thought could determine the game. Yeah, Shane Rollison is just a sophomore center, and he is learning on the job. Andrew Billings is a star in the making. That guy is a little mini Vince Wilfork. He is as good as there is out there inside. I would put him on the nose and let him just pair people up inside. He'll we'll be calling his name quite a bit today. There it is. That was Billings right there, Bob. Jamal Palmer came through as well and helped bring down Brown, so it'll be third down and close to seven. Yeah, I want to show you what Billings does so well. You can see him, he's right here, number 75. This is a powerful man. So he's going to take Rolshin, and if you notice, he's three yards in the backfield. When you have somebody who can disrupt the middle of your offense, it can't get any footing. It has nowhere to go. Billings is one of the top kids that I've watched so far this season. Third down and a long six, close to seven. Here comes the blitz. Over the middle, Shipley. The intended receiver. Crowd can't believe there was a call. And so Ronald Bird was there in coverage, and it looked like he got an arm around Shipley, but no flag comes out. It'll be fourth down. Nicely protected. But you can see Burt, yeah, there, there may have been something there, but, you know, I'm an old defensive guy. So I think we need to clarify that. You're a bitter old defensive guy. <laughs> that may be. That looks like good defense to me. Shipley did have great position, and he allowed the quarterback a spot to be able to throw it. But no flag, no call. That's what the old Raider used to say. How about this decision for Charlie Strong? You're kind of in no man's land where you might go for it here. Instead, he's going to try a 52-yard field goal with the junior Nick Rose. And now a flag thrown on the far sideline. Art Browse was all the way out to the numbers. This is a big call because if this is five yards against Texas, this will knock the horns out of field goal range. They'll have to punt. They could try a 52-yarder. They're not going to try a 57-yarder. There is no foul on the play. We were in the process of pumping back up the clock, and Coach came onto the field to bring to our attention a delayed game. No foul on the play. It's fourth down. That was maybe the nicest I've ever heard an official explain something. I'm, I'm not used to that. Everyone is fine. <laughs> All is Remain forgiven. Calm. All is well. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> and now they're set for a 52-yard attempt. Nick Rose, his career long. This year, 42. And it's blocked. A line drive and on the scoop. It's picked up. Baylor's got a good call on special teams. Terrell Burke down the sideline. He'll take it the distance. And the Bears have the lead. Just six quick. So the decision to try a 52-yard field goal backfires on Texas and Charlie Strong. A blocked field goal return for a score. And Baylor has the early touchdown lead. Russell Wilson.
Wilson and the Seahawks on the road to take on the Skins in an NFC matchup on Monday Night Football. ESPN at 8.15 Eastern. No other night is Monday night. That game also available live on Watch ESPN. Bob Wischusen, Matt Millen, Quinn Kesnick back here in Austin. And there is the man that made the big play, Bo Blackshear. Six foot four, 300 pound defensive tackle. He got the hand up, although he didn't have to get it too high to block the field goal. Attempt by Rose, a line drive that turns into seven for Baylor. Now Texas about to get the football back, but down by a touchdown. Returnable from the five. Fighting his way out to about the 26-yard line. On the kickoff return, pretty good field position for Texas after we check in with Robert Flores. Hey, Bob, Dr. Pepper conference update from the ACC right now on the Watch ESPN app. Clemson is up 14-0 on NC State. Deshaun Watson to Mike Williams. Full extension. Clemson and Death Valley leading 14-0. All right, Robert, thanks very much. It's a 7-0 lead for Texas, or for Baylor, pardon me, here at Texas. It's now Tyrone Swoops goes to work from his own 26-yard line. Flip in the flat, open is Jonathan Gray. A pickup of nearly seven on first down. Terrell Burt made the stop. Smart, they need to win on first downs, does Texas. They need to put themselves in a position where on second down, which are like second and four to five, that represents a down where you can pick a shot if you want to and still maintain a good third down uh, opportunity. But it also gives you an opportunity to be able to try to pound it right here and get the first. To Gray. Nothing there. Lost three. It'll be third down and six. Javante McGee made the stop, but there was nowhere to go. Yeah, and McGee just abused the center. I mean, watch Rawlinson right in the middle. Watch this. Remember what we just got done talking about? They know they're watching the same tape we're watching. So they're going to try to take advantage of a weak link. And it's it's just the nature of the beast. And so if you're going to struggle inside with power, they're going to give you power. That time, they give you a little bit of a slant to the inside. Rawlinson was too high. Couldn't handle it. Four-man rush on third down. Good protection and a throw over the middle on a line. It is caught by John Harris. Now check that Marcus Johnson scooped it up at about the 43-yard line. And that has to be a confidence booster for Tyrone Swoops. That's a terrific throw. And that offensive line. And I'll tell you what, Swoops, you and I have watched, we've watched a bunch of tape here. Swoops, when he just cuts it loose, he's pretty darn good. That kid's got an arm. He can throw it in a small window. And he got to, he'll put some juice on it. Got big hands on him. How about yesterday we had a chance to talk to him? I was impressed with him. He's got man-to-man -man coverage on the edge with John Harris. Just overthrows him, but a flag down. Xavier Howard was the cornerback in coverage for Baylor. Howard's pretty good, too. I like Xavier Howard. But it looks like this is going to be a hold down here against Howard. Howard's long. Prior He's got good pass. length. Holding defense number four. Ten-yard penalty automatic first down. Matt, of the teams that we have called so far this season, Baylor seems to play their safeties closer up towards the line of scrimmage, even when it looks like they're in a cover two than most of the defenses we've seen. And it looked like on that play, and that's going to give you pretty much clear man-to-man -man coverage out on the edge, and Swoops tried to go downtown. Yeah, and so what they're doing is they're going to play your safeties that tight. They're putting a lot of pressure outside on your corners. They're going here with a nickel. They got their 50 in. Quarterback draw. And Swoops is cut down after a gain of three. Nice open field tackle by Avian Edwards. That's real good by Avian Edwards because if he doesn't make that play, there's a lot of green. This was well diagnosed, and it just wasn't a good job of Malcolm Brown being able to get there. He, he had a chance to get him blocked, but he couldn't quite get there. Nicely played. Two receivers stacked to either side on second down and seven. Low snap, Swoops scoops it up. Long throw to the outside, and that's scooped up as well by Jackson Shipley. 
about two yards shy of the first down, so it brings up another third down, but much more manageable third down and two. But I like the way Sean Watts and the offensive coordinator for Texas is calling this game. He's not allowing the quarterback to be a sitting duck. He knows he's going to have some problems inside, so he's moving him a little bit, and he's taking advantage of Swoop's ability to be able to run. Swoop's have been three for three on this drive, and that's exactly what they needed to be. Now they line up in a run look with Jonathan Gray, the eye back. Can they run at that interior of the Baylor defense? They'll try to. And finally, Lane picking up the first down on a spin is Gray. Well, there was a hole there for Jonathan Gray. And that's a third down conversion as Alfred Pullum came up and couldn't make the stop. Nicely done. They captured the edge, and Gray sees it. It's designed to go to the inside, but he bounces it outside. Also shortening the game, keeping that Texas defense on the sideline, keeping Bryce Petty off the field. Time-consuming drive here for the Horns. And a cutback for Gray picks up about three and a half. Malcolm Brown, 28, and Jonathan Gray have not reached their stride. And they have been a product of an offensive line that's been reshuffled and trying to find their way. And so today, it's just the start of this game right now, this offensive line is doing a nice job of getting assignment football, a hat on a hat. And that's allowed these running backs to be able to pick and get a little bit of real estate. Swoops just placed one off his back foot and almost intercepted. The blitz came right up the middle. Johnson, the intended receiver, Xavier Howard almost got the pick, but boy, there was untouched pressure in the face of the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, he came right up the middle. And Gray didn't see it. That's probably what you have to pick up. That's Britt Hager, number 44, their middle backer. But I'll tell you what happened on the outside. That's a nice job of the receiver coming back. And here's what you're talking about. This is an inexperienced offensive line trying to deal with that type of pressure. That, those numbers, those are career starts. I mean, that's, this, there's no experience up there. It sets up another third down. Well, protected those swoops on third down, buying some time in the pocket. He'll scramble, and now what do you do? Now it's fourth down, just inside the 30-yard line, fourth and a solid five. You just had a field goal blocked. Do you want to try another relatively long field goal just to get on the board? Now it looks like Texas this time is going to go for it. Charlie Strong is saying, look, I like what our defense is doing right now. And and the other so thing, let's, let's get on the board. We can get some points. And Charlie Strong told us yesterday, you have to score touchdowns against Baylor. Right. You need points. It's not enough to kick threes. You have to score touchdowns because you know they'll put sevens on the board. They'll have to be more aggressive and go for it at times, and they go for it here. Swoops on fourth down. Looking for the home run ball. Simply incomplete. Boy, he threw the fastball just a couple of miles per hour too quick. And Shipley couldn't climb the ladder. And it's a turnover on downs for Texas. But good coverage by this Baylor defense. And so you see on the outside, they locked it up right away. He's going to try to get right down the middle. The safety would have been there. He knew it. He had to be a little higher. He couldn't drop the level too much because the safety's coming inside out. But Shipley had beaten the corner. Ball just took off on him. We've got four minutes and five seconds to go in the first quarter. We have barely seen this Baylor offense. They've dominated teams in the first half so far this season, and they're up to 94-7, to seven, outscoring opponents in the first quarter. But their touchdown on special teams. Back to the offense, right up the gut goes Winwood. Picks up 12, and a Bears first down. As soon as that ball is set, they are off and rolling. Petty under pressure. Throws it away. Smart. A little extra in the offensive backfield. Cedric Reed got the pressure on Petty. And Trayvon Armstead, the fullback or the tight end, came over and thought that Reed spent a little too much time on the ground with the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on top of him a little bit there. Well, they weren't too thrilled with that. Second down and ten. Texas shows pressure right up the middle. It's a handoff to Linwood. It'll be third down and long again. Third down and about eight. Malcolm Brown made the stop. Malcolm Brown is a 
That's a talented player. He and Ridgeway inside. They're tough to block. Baylor came into today number one in the Big 12 and number eight in the nation in third down conversions. But again, they have not played top-notch competition to say the least. They're over two today, third and eight. Petty looking for the deep ball. It's incomplete. Just off the fingertips of Levi Norwood. Norwood had him beat. The ball was where it had to be. I don't see that official has a hat on. The one guy doesn't, so he may have been marked out of bounds at the top. Let's watch Norwood, 42. He's from the inside slot receiver. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds. That's why he dropped his hat. That's going to set up a fourth down. Another, another win for the Texas defense. So Texas turns it over on downs. And all that Baylor can manage is one first down. Jackson Shipley back at the 15-yard line to receive the punt of Spencer Roth. Returnable, tries to make the first man miss, breaks a tackle and gets tripped up at about the 23. Good special teams play again on the coverage for the Bears. 43-yard punt, a six-yard return. Taylor Young made the stop, but again, quickly off the field. The Texas defense, they haven't expended a lot of energy here in the first quarter so far. Yeah, but shoot, you're down, you know, you're, you're, under, you're at the three-minute mark. You're down seven on a blocked field goal that's returned. But right now, if you're Texas, you've got to feel good about what you're doing. you got to feel good that you've been able to move the ball and protect at times for swoops pretty well. And then offensively, I mean defensively, they've handled this Baylor defense, uh, offense. So I, I think they've got to, they've gained, they'll gain a little bit of, of uh, confidence here with the way they've played through this first quarter. Play action for Spencer. Wide open Shipley, but he behind him. And that forced the stumble, and it's only about a two-yard gain. It looked like there was more room there for Jackson Shipley with a better throw from Swoops. Yeah, and he, he needs to throw it right now. Don't wait. See those three steps. Those three steps it's behind him anyway, but those three steps would allow Shipley to be able to do something with the ball after the catch. As it was, it was behind him. He couldn't, couldn't really get his feet under him. And this Baylor defense is underrated. You made that point oh, watching yeah. tape this week. Everyone talks about their gaudy offensive numbers. This is a good group that Baylor has on defense. Jet sweep and an end around. The flip on Monty Foreman, a true freshman. He's got another gear. Kicks it in and picks up the first down. Foreman's got some juice. They need to be able to use that. And the best way to do that is get them in space. In this particular instance, it's a change of direction with the reverse. There's the flip. Now watch Swoops. He's going to try to get in on it, and he does, actually. <laughs> He's got, he needs to learn to get a little lower than that. He got blocked, and it's a nice job. They were able to handle Swoops and make the tackle all in one. Malcolm Brown. About three yards on first down. Well, talking to Sean Watson, who's been with Charlie Strong for a long time now, he's a play caller. And also talking to Charlie Strong, they talked about these true freshman receivers and wanting to get them the ball and maybe get them more involved, that it shouldn't just be all on the top three for the Horns. They've got some true freshmen. Now, right now, they've got the veterans on the field. You can see Shipley and John Harris, but they've got some talented speed guys that can get in the mix. And you saw that on the reverse to Armonte Foreman. Wide open. Oh, and again, he pulled the string. Malcolm Brown tried to scoop it up. Now it's another incompletion on an underthrow by Tyrone Swoops. Now they'll give him the catch and pick up about four. Still sets up third down and four. That wasted opportunity right there, Shoes. He has him right now, and he's wide open. They did not cover him. Instead, he threw that ball short. He does a nice job of making the catch, but the opportunity to be able to get a big play is gone. Texas is three for five on third down. Swoops, long throw to the sideline, it's intercepted. He stared down his receiver. And Orion Stewart with his second interception this season jumped the route. The safety was there in coverage. And it's another giveaway for Texas. Well played by Stewart, number 28. thing so he just eyeballs the quarterback and it takes him right to the ball 39 of the last 44 games that Baylor has played and most of that with Art Bryles 
Rozier and Bill Bennett call the defense. They've got at least one takeaway, and they get one here. So now great field position for Bryce Petty. A straight handoff to Johnny Jefferson. And Jefferson has about three yards to midfield. That should take us down to the end of the first quarter. Although, if there's a team that can get another snap off before the end of the first quarter, it's Baylor. <laughs> They've got plenty of time. 15 right. seconds up on the clock. They might get two more snaps off. Four-man rush. Betty up the seam, and that is incomplete. Levi Norwood, the intended receiver, but that pass sailed on Bryce Petty. So it will be another third down, third and about seven. And Petty, Petty is now only one for five to start the game. Texas has been able to handle this with four rushes. They haven't added anybody in in terms of blitz. They've been getting pressure with four. the middle that'll be short of the first down by about a yard and a half Johnny Jefferson got to the 45 yard line of Texas and that will take us to the end of the first quarter with a decision to make for Baylor when we come back we'll return to Austin Texas following these messages and a word from our local ABC stations you're watching ESPN on ABC Welcome back to Austin. A perfect day for football. Quinn Kesnick is down on that Baylor sideline. And Q, this looks like it might be another go-for-it situation for Baylor. Hunter Spencer Roth continues to just drill on the sideline. Meanwhile, the offense is huddled around Kendall Bryles and Art Bryles. And it appears as if they're going to go for it. you got to think quarterback run right here. Matt, how about a little fake quarterback option run and a little play action on fourth down? Yeah, they built that thing. That's a great call, Q. They build that thing right into this, to this offense. And it's kind of involved. Running. Let's see if they don't try it. Right up the gut on fourth down. Very close. Johnny Jefferson, and he's got it, it looks like. As he gets the pile moved inside the 44-yard line. Needed to get to the 44 to pick up the first down. Yeah, this is just about... Now the numbers work to your advantage you have an extra guy in the backfield. So they take advantage of that and they stay with the run. Nice Petty off play action. Long throw to the outside, incomplete. Antoine Goodley, the intended receiver. It'll be second down and 10. Baylor's now two for two going for it on fourth down, but the first time that they went for it in their own end on first down ended up having to punt anyway. So it's been a good start to this game for Texas defensively. A good start for Bryce Petty. Jefferson to the 40-yard line. A pickup of four. Sets up third down and six. This is Texas defense, and we talked about it earlier. Those down, those down four people, they've got skills. And right now they're handling it. Ridgeway right there is he's playing well inside. Lawless Malcolm Brown playing well. They need to find a way to get off the field. Baylor's 0 for 4 on third down, but they've gone for it on fourth down twice and converted. <laughs> Texas looks to bring pressure. There goes Bryce Petty. Flag down. He is upended after picking up the first down, but a flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage. That's a smart play. Smart play offensively. Holding offense number 75. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's Troy Baker, the tackle. That's not a smart play. You can see him right there in the middle, number 75, right over here. So he gets right there. They're going to call that every time. Sets up this third and about 15. Third down and 16 from midfield. Throws it underneath. That's not even close. Antoine Goodley wrapped up by Michael Thompson at the 44-yard line. Sets up fourth down and 10. Smart. 
smart defense shoots. So they rushed three, dropped eight. They had their three deep on top, and then they had their linebackers drop even deeper. And so the, the concept is let them complete a pass, but let them complete it in front of us. And Goodley's the guy who gets the call. They make the play. Good defense. Back for Third punt for Spencer Roth. He's only had 12 kicks coming into today. Three here in the first half. The intentional end over end kick. Simply calls for a fair catch and fields it inside his own 10 yard line. The only touchdown scored so far on special teams by Bale. They've got the 7 0 lead. Right. Texas has shut down the Baylor offense, but Baylor has the 7 0 lead because of a touchdown on special teams. And that takes us already to our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Bo Blackshear blocks the field goal, and it's picked up by Terrell Burke. He takes it the distance, a 62-yard blocked punt return for a touchdown. That's the only points we've had so far early here in the second quarter, and Texas now starts from their own 10-yard line. They have bottled up Baylor and the number one offense in America. Now can Tyrone Swoops move the ball? Oh, He's starting on the ground with Jonathan Gray. Gray breaking tackles. Out to the 36-yard line. One play in a gain of 26 yards. And that gets Texas out of the shadow of their own goalposts. Watch Jake Rollison, number 50, the center, on Billings. He just takes Billings and allows him then to be used. And so what he does is he takes his momentum, uses it against him. And then they just run behind them and have a big down. Smart by Rollison. Flash the play, picks up the blitz. Swoops, a long ball down the sideline. Under thrown, flag down, intercepted. Ryan Reed gets the pick. No, check that, they'll say incomplete. That he did not get his hands under the football. There was also a flag down. Well, lost in all that, that ball traveled 50 yards in the air, all arm by Tyrone Swoops. <laughs> Man, he had, he couldn't step into it. He just heaved it with all arm, and that's 50-some yards in the air. There is no foul on the play for pass interference. It's second down. One of the blitzers was picked up nicely by Jonathan Gray, but the pressure still got there. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't step into it. That was all arm. And so here it is on the other end. And that's a good call. Because Reed doesn't get his hand. He tries to get his hands to it, but it slips through and hits the ground. Good non, that's, that's a good call. And that pressure came from Sean Oakman. Six foot nine defensive end, the transfer from Penn State. It was right in the face of Tyrone Swoops. Swoops wants the deep ball again. Looking for Marcus Johnson. And Johnson couldn't make the over-the-shoulder catch. And quickly, let's go back to the studio. Check in with Robert Flores. All right, Bob, AT&T inside the headset. TCU's B.J. Catalan gives them a 14-0 lead. But Oklahoma has replied with two touchdowns of their own. They're not tied at 14. OU in Fort Worth today. They'll be in Dallas next weekend against the Longhorns. So the Red River rivalry next week. And who knows where Texas and Oklahoma might both be in the Big 12 standings based on what happens today. Third down and 10, though. Another incompletion for Swoops. Let's come in. He's flushed out of the pocket again. Floats it to the sideline. Flag down. Incomplete pass for Jonathan Gray. And it's going to be holding against Texas. They'll decline that. So at Phil 40, Bennett. 40. Offense number 74. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. Phil Bennett is the defensive coordinator for Baylor. And so what he's doing right now is he's, it, it's called green dogging. And so they don't commit to 100% blitz. 
what they're doing is they're having their linebackers read the receivers coming out of the back, any back in the backfield or in there for a block. If they stay in, then they come and bring pressure. If they release, then they take it. And so what it does, it creates kind of a, an uneasiness for the quarterback to see who's coming and who's not. A wobbly kick. Levi Norwood can't field it, though, and it stays in bounds and takes a bit of a Texas hop inside the 20-yard line. So it's killed at about the 17, 47-yard kick. Baylor's got the ball in the lead when we come back. Every day of its existence, if you've had it, you know why. First and 10, Baylor. They've done nothing to speak of offensively. They have had three possessions and have not gained more than 15 yards on any of them so far. Here's Bryce Petty, wide open. They'll get more than 15 yards on this play. Antoine Goodley up the sideline. Michael Thompson bumped him out, but Antoine Goodley, who missed a couple of games against Northwestern State and Buffalo with a quad injury, a welcomed return last week, 114 yards. And a win over Iowa State. Breaking tackles. Good run by Scott Linwood. He fought hard for about four. Good balance. Refuses to go down. And watch his balance. There's the difference in the play right there. And then it just runs through tackles. That's, that's good determination. Petty on the slant. Incomplete. Looking for Corey Coleman. It'll be third down and five. And let's head down to Quint. One thing we've seen from Texas defense, a lot of substitutions each series. You know, to start that series, Jordan Hicks was not in the ball game. They think that they've got to play a ton of guys up front in their linebacking position. They faded late in games this year. they got to play people early to hope to be fresh in the fourth quarter. Well, they forced Baylor into another third down here. And Baylor will try to run for it. And keeping his balance and getting the first down, it looks like, is Linwood. That's well done by Linwood. You mentioned it. He kept his balance. He stays on his feet. He's not the tallest guy. He's kind of vertically challenged, but he is a good player. Bullets one of the sideline and it's broken up. Well done by Duke Thomas, the junior from Colleen, Texas. Got a couple of interceptions. And he and Quandre Diggs make up a pretty good pair of corners, but they'll be tested today. Yeah, but they're they're passing the test so far. They're not giving any quarter out there whatsoever. Linwood gets the edge. Breaks another tackle down the sideline. Finally ridden out of bounds by Dylan Haynes. Nice. He's right at the first down marker. It looks to be good enough for another Baylor first down. You see that nice block by Antoine Goodley outside. He came back and just waffled somebody. I didn't get to see that. Well done. If you're going to have a successful run game, your wide receivers, they've got to block. This is basically a run play in the Baylor offense. Just a quick pitch. That's caught by Antoine Goodley, and he picks up 11 more. That's smart by Bryce Preddy. When he sees that you're playing off coverage like that, you get a guy like Goodley, who's a powerful guy and an excellent runner. Oh, Blewett's down. Caleb Blewett, the sophomore end, is down on the play. Yeah, they'll take that. You give them, you give them an eight-yard cushion, they'll take it every time. And let's remember, this is not a defensive front for Texas that has much depth. So if they lose frontline players, you know, Quentin talked about it a moment ago, they have to rotate in what they've got, Matt. At the same time, though, it's a pretty big talent drop-off from their frontline guys in their front seven to those secondary players. And that's good to see as Caleb Blewett able to walk off. Caleb Blewett just a sophomore. And you can you can see they've got some they've got some young kids here who can play. They just don't have enough of them. Ridgeway is the other one on the inside. It's funny they were talking about Ridgeway. I was talking to some of the players who say, like, who's the guy? Who's the guy that can't be blocked? And they said, if Ridgeway decides to play, no one can touch him. I said, make him angry before every play. Charlie Strong calls Hassan Ridgeway Green Mile. That's how big he is. Right up the middle, 
The eighth play of the drive picks up about four and a half more for Baylor as Johnny Jefferson is brought down by Cedric Reed. Second down at six. Yeah, both these runners are good inside runners. Right up the middle again. Jefferson spins, works out about two or three more yards. As Texas was barely set when the ball was snapped. This is where they've got to get set. They've got to get ready. Doesn't matter if you're tired, you've got to push through it. Try to run for it again. Bouncing off tacklers is Jefferson, and he's got the first down. It'll be first and goal. He was stopped on a play that was designed to go up the middle, but bounced it outside. Yeah, the difference between when you watch good defenses and bad defenses is the edge. Holding the edge, keeping a strong edge. That time they did not keep the edge. Jefferson found it. First and goal. Quarterback run for Petty. And he's inside the five to the four-yard line. Malcolm Brown brought him down. You know, Petty, you can see, as he's gotten and as he's gotten a little more healthy and he's feel, he feels better, he'll use his feet more and more. He's using it more now than we've seen him on tape the first four games. Petty, he'll try to run for it. Lowers his shoulder at the goal line. Is he in? No signal yet. Touchdown, Baylor. Bryce Petty is able to knock it through his 19th career rushing touchdown. And it's a two-score lead for the Bears. Well, he wants the quick throw, and it's taken away. So he just pulls it down and uses his instinct and then his strength at the end. Troy Hall there giving a little bit of resistance, but doesn't quite get there. to see if that ball, if that knee was down before the ball crossed the plane. It looked pretty clear as if Petty got in the end zone. It's a 12-play, 83-yard touchdown drive. That is on the verge of giving Baylor the 14-0 lead. And Bryce Petty last year led this team in rushing touchdowns. So the quarterback run game is a big part of what they do. And he's just a great story. They originally meant to go to Tennessee. Philip Fulmer then is replaced by Lane Kiffin. Word gets back to him. He's not high on Lane Kiffin's list. So he reopens his recruitment, decides to go to Baylor. But then he ends up sitting beside or behind Nick Florence. Took him a long time. Basically, 2008, he last played as a starter in high school and bided his time until last season. A player that, by and large, on the college football scene, nationally speaking, no one knew anything about and he ends up leading Baylor to their first ever Big 12 championship and an appearance at the Fiesta Bowl. After further review, the ball carrier was down at the half yard line. Wow. So the it will be down. Baylor's ball, second and goal from the half yard line. The clock will start on the ready for play. There's the knee. There's the ball. That's a good call by the officials. So that will at least give the Texas defense a chance to play goal line. They need to be stout inside but hold that edge. Because these running backs have started inside then bounced it to the outside. Check out the size of the fullback. Laquan McGowan at 390 pounds. There to push the pile. Did Linwood follow him in? Baylor thinks Linwood got through. I don't look at the look at the, the headlines, but down here, he's it's not marked. They untangle the pile. Short of the goal line. It's fourth and goal from inside the one. That's a big fullback. Hard to believe he didn't get in. Baylor will go for it on fourth and goal. Penny on the quarterback sneak. Moves the pile. Is he in? Texas thinks they have a stop. Did Texas just put together a goal line stand? And they did. Steve Edmonds stacks the middle. And Penny can't. Ridgeway, lowest man wins inside. 
will stop short of the goal. The ruling on the field is under further review. So they'll go to the replay booth again. And how could you possibly <laughs> overturn the call on the field? You can't see Bryce Petty, much less the football. Yeah, but what you can see is where his knee is. And that's down right there. He does not get in. Even if they had ruled it a touchdown, I'm not sure how you'd ever overturn it. He just disappears into a sea of bodies. There has to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the field. And the call was Texas got him stopped. Edmund did a nice job. See how he goes over the top of the blockers and hits Petty. Petty's head is down, and then they spike him right there. I mean, that knee is down. I can't see where the ball is, and no one else will either. Ridgeway on the inside did a great job. Low man wins inside. You just got, oh, that's a good get off. And Edmonds over the top. That's well done. After further review, the ruling on the field stands this call. First and 10, Texas. So the good news for Texas, they get the goal line stand. The bad news? The back nose of the football is almost touching their goal line, so you can't ask for much more if you're Baylor's defense. You have a chance to completely flip the field, but that's how far short Baylor came from scoring points and adding to their lead, so it stays 7-0. Play drive that results in no points, and now Texas has it back inside their own one. I didn't catch what the uh, what the referee said. Our referee, Reggie Smith, his microphone appears to be working inside the building, but we're having a hard time hearing it in terms of our television feed. So he has now reaffirmed, it seems, that it is Texas ball at their own one-foot line, and Baylor still well, hasn't gotten their defense out on the field to play. Now, the official standing right next to the center so doesn't allow him to snap, but... seems completely confused for some reason on their sideline as to what the field. scenario is, is for some reason they've got offensive players coming back out on the field let's see if we can find out what the confusion is from quick Bob, for some reason baylor thinks it's fourth down and reggie the official right now talking to art browse in the huddle right in front of me he initially said third down it, then it's fourth down, and then talked to the other refs, changed his call. But no one from the officiating staff ever came over to the Baylor sideline and said, that was fourth down, it is Texas ball. So you had both the offense and defense on the field. That was fourth down. How about this? Oh, they're still trying to get it sorted out with Art Bryles and the Baylor sideline. It's not going to go. Yeah, it's defense. Yeah, that was a stop on fourth down. I mean. So maybe some confusion as to what down it was on the Baylor sideline, but a clear indication here inside the building to everyone else was that it was fourth down. Texas gets a stop. They have the ball inside their own one. It looks like they might just try and create some room. Tyron swoops on a quarterback sneak. Picks up about a yard and a half. And Malcolm Brown was back in the backfield trying to help pave the way to for Tyron Brown. Swoops. I know you're not allowed double numbers. Are you allowed double names? Can you have two Malcolm Browns in the backfield at the same time? Yes, you can. I don't know if they're... Uh... <laughs> I don't know if the people are ready for that. But... So it was only a yard gain, but a big yard for Texas. As it just gives them a little bit of breathing room. Second down and nine. Play action. Swoops. 
flips it wide open up the sideline. Alex De La Torre, the fullback, lowers his shoulders out to the 25. A gain of 23 yards. That's a big Texas first down. That was better by Swoops of getting rid of the ball quickly. He still can get rid of it a little sooner. Right when he sees it, that court, that fullback, his head has flipped around. If you give it to him sooner, he has even more opportunity to be able to create more space. De La Torre does a nice job of getting his head around immediately in the flat. Swoops has to see it quicker. across the 30 as we head back to Robert Flores. All right, Bob Wells Fargo getting it done. Check out Clemson quarterback Deshaun Watson. Get your cold cuts. Get your cold cuts. Get your cold cuts. He hurdled the defender. Clemson leading 31-0 over NC State on the Watch ESPN app. Second down and four for Texas. They started at their own one-foot line after a goal-line stand. Six and a half minutes to go before halftime. Tyrone swoops on a keeper, spins outside. Still on his feet, but heading in the wrong direction and lost all the yards they picked up on first down. Eventually, Bryce Hager, leading tackler for Baylor, came up to make the stop. So now it's third down and ten. He's, he's not a he's not a runner. And now he has to be a thrower. You think on third down and ten. They spread the field with four receivers. Looking for the true freshman Lorenzo Joe. And there's the flag. Xavier Howard again was there in coverage. And that's going to get Texas a first down. Prior to the pass, holding defense number four, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Xavier Howard is he's physical. And there's the hold. They they he held the inside arm. It was unnecessary because he had the coverage all over him. He's very good at the line of scrimmage. He's got good length. He uses his hands and feet extremely well, right at the point. And he that was one he he didn't need to have to. Give that little tug on. Big first down for Texas to their own 35. Play action for Swoops. Up the sideline, he's got Jeff Swain. And Matt, how much on ticket did we see of Texas? Play action fake, Tyrone Swoops getting him on the move. Most, as Swain comes up hobbling, most of his completions, at least solid throws, seem to be from the pocket. He's he's used misdirection effectively here in the first half of time. Yeah, I didn't think that, sh that you know, that's Sean Watson. Sean Watson knows that he has a decided disadvantage inside against that rush. And they're also blitzing him off the edge, so he's trying to get outside that edge, which I, has been working well for them so far. Second down and three and a drive that began at the one-foot line. Trying to turn the corner is Brown. Flag down. Another penalty marker back at the line. Yeah, that's going to be a hold. Holding offense number 81. Yeah. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's the first penalty against Texas. We've had five against Baylor here in the first half. But now it'll be second down at 13. Yeah, you know, it's, when you're on the edge, there's a fine line. So Daniels, number 81, he has to secure that edge. And so he had it initially, and then he just stayed with it a little bit too long, and that's where the hands came in. chant goes up here in Austin look how many they're rushing it's only three he feels the pressure because he can't find anything downfield there's eight men drop 
small windows. So he makes the right decision and sets up this third and three. Better protection. Snatching a third down reception out of the air is the tight end, MJ McFarland. That's a gain of five and a Texas first down. That's a heck of a, a catch by McFarland because that's a bullet. Swoops put some juice on this thing. Let's head down to Quint. Bob, confidence is now perking up on this Texas sideline. It was Charlie Strong who told us this week, I think we're good, we just lack confidence. And the longer this game stays close, a one-score game, the more confidence both Texas defense and this young quarterback show. And they've dominated time of possession as well. 16 minutes to 10 and a half, basically, here in the first half for Texas. And now a timeout has to be called by Tyrone Swoops. Second charge he was timeout. Having a tough time Texas. getting his group lined up. 3.13 to go before halftime. Baylor's still on top. Welcome back as we take a look at our Pacific Light game summary. Only one touchdown on the board so far, Matt Millen. And it was on special teams, scored by Baylor to Rutherford with the punt return for the touchdown. And then it's a punt, it, it, there's a, a punctuation mark for this Texas game, which really has kind of inspired them right now, and it's the goal line stand. And it was a 14-play drive, and they hung in there, and it, they're now on the, on the back end of that, 53 yards away from the score. And pardon me, the blocked field goal return for the touchdown, but Texas with a drive here, and there's Shipley sliding for a catch. At the 40-yard line, nice throw by Tyrone Swoops. A gain of 13. Sean Watson is calling a heck of a game. He is keeping this Baylor defense off balance. He's moving them out of the pocket. He stays in the pocket. He's running the ball effectively. They can't get a bead on Swoops. Swoops is in and out of the pocket, and they're offsetting it with good running game, or a solid running game, I should say. Swoops right now is four for four on this drive. Five yards for Malcolm Brown. Now, having said that, a at some point, you need to score. Yeah, absolutely. But they're doing what they wanted to do. They wanted to create second and manageable so that they can have third and manageable. Don't go backwards. Swoops right now, four for four. You can see these things. But the offensive line's playing better for Charlie Strong's deep uh, offense. This is, they were really struggling. This is a good sign for them. 10th play of this drive that began inside their own one yard line. Again, a handoff to Malcolm Brown. He's got the edge. Steps out of bounds, just shot of the 23 yard line. Pushed out by Avion Edwards. But that's another Texas first down, a gain of 13 more. Jeez, Malcolm Brown is gonna be one of those guys that they're gonna say, where the heck did this guy come from? They say, well, his offensive line was kind of a work in progress. He'll get to the next level, and he's going he's to play. Well, this is a good player. He's got good balance. He can make you miss. He's a good inside the tackle runner. Catches the ball well. Swoops on a design rollout. Wants the throwback screen. Brown has it. Gets a block. Gets to the sideline. Flag down. He puts it back into the end zone for what the crowd thinks is a touchdown. But a flag back at the 25-yard line. And it might be Cedric Flowers that's called for the hold. Flowers was fine. He tried to finish it. All Holding. he had to do is get Offense, in the way. Number 66. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. And that's a killer. That's basically a red zone penalty with 133 to go before halftime. Now remember, Texas deferred their option to the second half, so they'll have the ball to start the third quarter. Watch right here. All he needs to do is that. Just stay in the way. Just get your rear end between him and the and the receiver. Instead, he latches on to him and tries to bury him. And that's the difference between a good play and a lousy play. Now it's first and 20. Bouncing outside, Jonathan Gray. He's down the sideline. <laughs> With authority on Orion Stewart. And a flag comes up. A flag thrown after the play was over. This Texas team is finding themselves. It's one of those, you know, when Rocky was in, you ain't so bad. 
<laughs> I guess I'm dating myself, but that's what it is. Well, you're old. We all know that. Yeah, good point. We've spent time with you, and at least you didn't say fat. That's uh, a step up from last well, week. Well, we'll get to that next week. We'll <laughs> yeah. keep you just an old this week. 120 to go before half done. Now, with all of the flowery things we're saying about the Texas offense, they still haven't scored. Right. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 28, late shove out of bounds. Happiness instead of goal, automatic first down. And just as importantly, it's a first down. It was first and 20, and now it becomes a first down. Gray with a little shot to Orion Stewart, and then Orion Stewart took exception to the stare down. Yeah, he baited him right there. See, he gave him that little bit of walk up like, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Should that have been a 15-yard penalty? No. But Boy, that, it that is. was really touchy. That's not a real... No pun intended. ...demonstrative shove to the 10-yard line. Down to about the 7-yard line goes Jonathan Gray. <laughs> but look at this offensive line for Texas. I, I can't explain to you what we watched on film. They were not good at all. And I'm being kind. Right now, this group... They're coming together, man. They're growing up. And the crowd's getting antsy. Texas is doing the absolute right thing with the clock. Let it wind down. Don't give Bryce Petty any time before halftime. The best thing you can do is score with 20 seconds to go. 13th play of the drive, second down. Swoops on a keeper. Down the one yard line at the goal line. Is he in? No. It'll be first and goal, though, from the one yard line. And now I would expect Charlie Strong might think about letting the clock wind down. And calling a timeout. He wants a timeout now. It is first and goal. Charlie has played this first thing First choice timeout. Texas. We're going to step aside during the Texas timeout. Swoops comes this close to getting the horns on the board. First and goal when we return. Third and final timeout. Only moments away from John Saunders, Mac Brown, Danny Cannell, the Cooper Tire Halftime Report. A look back at today's early action, including a huge win down in Starkville for Mississippi State. They'll take a look at tonight's big matchup in the Big Ten between Nebraska and Michigan State. And a look at some first-half highlights as well, but not before we end the first half with Texas right on the doorstep. And they want to go hurry. They'll try and sneak it with swoops. That was up they might have it at the bottom of the pile as the clock stops with 29 seconds to go. Is Good. Texas going to come away empty? Did Baylor come away with the football inside the one? There's a lot of fighting going on under there. Who has the ball? No signal yet. Baylor's got it. Texas goes on the field is a fumble short of the goal line. Recovered by Baylor. First down. And they fumble it inside the one. It didn't look, I don't know if he got it right from the start because his body language was, he went side right there. Yeah, he never got it. He never got that ball. Yeah, Charlie Strong's got to be, I mean, obviously he's upset. That's every, he, they did everything they were supposed to do all the way down to the half yard line. And then they fumbled it. And it was on the exchange. Swoops never had that ball. It came out bad. Either he pulled out too soon, or it was a bad snap or something, but it didn't happen. And Bo Blackshear got the recovery. So Bo Blackshear not only recovers the fumble inside the Baylor one-yard line to stop Texas from scoring before halftime, he blocked the field goal. That set up the return for Terrell Burt, the only points we've had here in the first half. So Texas is out of timeouts. All Baylor has to do is get the ball across their own goal line, and Petty will just quarterback sneak it forward, and that'll end the half. Texas starts the third quarter with the ball, but they still have no points on the board. But a they would be 99-yard drive short circuits with a turnover. Yeah, it, and, and that went wrong for them. But there's a lot that went right for them in this first half. And they can take this first half and say, look, we can do this. This is very doable. We can handle their front. We can handle their passing game. We can handle this offense. We're good enough offensively. That's a very positive thing for Charlie Strong's team. 
Well, that might be a positive for Charlie Strong. He can't be happy, though, right now. He's down there with Quinn. Coach, a dramatic change there. What, what did your uh, quarterback and center tell you when they came over to the sideline? Uh, this is quarterback and center exchange, fumble the football. How do you best describe the play of your defense so far, Coach? Well, we're playing well. We kept it out of the end zone. We just got to keep going. They got the seven on the block field goal. Thanks, Coach. Oh, he's not happy. A frustrated Charlie Strong, who believes this game should be tied at halftime. Instead, Baylor makes a huge play on special teams. They get a stop and a takeaway inside the one-yard line, and they shut out the horns in the first half. 7-0 Baylor at the break. We head to the studio. The Cooper Tires halftime report following these messages. And a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. coverage of college football just about set for the start of the third quarter Baylor with a 7-0 lead Bob Wachuz and Matt Millen Quint Kesnick here in Austin one touchdown scored in the first half and it's a return of a blocked field goal we're talking about Big 12 football we've got the number one offense in America here what do you make of this first half did you even see this coming yeah I think uh, no we didn't see it coming but what we did see was a, a Texas team that got a win in the first half and they need to carry that into the second half now even though they had two plays that went against them I thought the, the scoring for them was their defense they held this Baylor offense to no touchdowns and they've been going at hyper speed and they've slowed them down they have been in control and then offensively they were able to move the ball at the end of the half and I think what that's done is giving them some confidence they need to build off that now now having said that some miscues for Texas granted you may call it a win in the first half they kept it low scoring but they made their own mistakes this the biggest right before halftime a fumble at the goal line by Tyrone swoops on the center exchange and Texas just about had punched through a 99 yard touchdown drive and they end up being shut out in the first half. Yeah, and that's the old, we're almost good enough. You can't be almost. You've got to be. And so they've got to prove it now. They went in at halftime. They talked it through. Now they'll have their opportunity to be what they are. Well, Texas deferred their option to the second half, so they start the third quarter with the football. Here comes Duke Thomas on the return. And it's a pretty good one. Now to about the 33-yard line. Well, Quint, you had a chance to spend some time, I guess, with Art Bryles. What did he make of a weird first half? Disbelief on both sides, actually. You know, Art Bryles talking about the fact that they didn't score. They have had no success over the middle of the field. Up the in internal seams or in crossing routes. Penalties have been, it killed them. And they're just a group that's un unaccustomed to having zero offensive touchdowns at halftime. Meanwhile, Texas, they made a very subdued entrance here back into the stadium. Kind of feeling down after not converting in the, in the red zone after that 99-yard drive. Disbelief on both sides. Well, they start here with pretty good field position at their own 32-yard line, and they'll try to keep it on the ground. And maybe a yard or so from Malcolm Brown, but Matt, you, your point, I think, going into the locker room at halftime, yes, you had the miscue at the one-yard line, but if you look at this game through the wide-angle lens, if you're Charlie Strong in Texas, this is your kind of game. If this was a shootout, you know, Baylor probably eventually win going away. Absolutely, and they may still do that, but right now, you have Baylor right where you want them, and and offensively, what you've wanted to be able to do, you've been doing. Now, this is not good. They've been winning on first downs. So this is this is a crucial down for them because third down, third long has not been kind to them. Swing pass is there. Malcolm Brown. And let's see where they mark him out. Right at the 40. So that's a couple of yards shot of the first down. Avion Edwards made the stop. It'll be third down and two. Smart. This is good by Swoops. Now he sees it. He open. Get the ball in his hands quick. Malcolm Brown's, Malcolm Brown's a good player. They need to use everything he brings to the table, which is considerable. He's a good power inside runner. He has enough speed to get to the edge. He can make you miss. Catches the ball well out of the backfield. Well, the combination of Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray last season combined for close to 1,700 yards rushing. 
Play clock winding down, third down, and they don't get it off. It looks like, unless a timeout was called by Charlie Strong from the sideline. Prior to, That's the snap. What Prior to the snap, Texas calls their first charge timeout. Uh, inexcusable. Well, young quarterback, a couple of times we've seen him struggle with the play clock. Mike check. Referee Mike check. College football doubleheader on ESPN tonight at 7 Eastern. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, Auburn, and LSU, then at 10.30, Utah, UCLA. Both games live on Watch ESPN. If you take a look at our college football rankings, brought to you by Chick-fil-A and how different might like this list look when the next AP Top 10 poll comes out. Oregon has gone down. Texas A&M has gone down. Notre Dame is in a dogfight right now with Stanford. You've got Baylor struggling here in Austin, there's a lot that could happen between now and the end of what could be a crazy college football Saturday. Swoops on third down, fights off the sack, finds an underneath receiver, but short of the first down. Fighting to try and get to the marker is an MJ McFarland, but he looks to be a yard short. And on fourth down and one, Charlie Strong will undoubtedly kick it away. The concept of the play is good. It's they just don't do a good job in their uh, what's your, what do you call it? Drawn a blank. Having one of those mental those old well, old mental things. As we pointed out earlier, you are old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Execution. <laughs> that's a hard word. Yeah. It was in the execution. It's a wobbly kick, but this could work out nicely for Texas. Normally, these take a favorable hop. This one just dies. At the 19-yard line, so not much there for William Russ. A 40-yard punt. And tonight, Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo. Heads to East Lansing, the first meeting of AP-ranked Big Ten teams this year. Number 19, Nebraska. Number 10, Michigan State. Saturday Night Football tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Well, how much longer can Texas's defense pitch a shutout against this offense. Their offense hasn't put any points on the board. The only touchdown scored on special teams on a blocked field goal by Baylor in the first half. So it's still 7-0 Bears. But you can only hold Bryce Petty down for so long. They'll start on the ground. Linwood finds room. The 26-yard line for a gain of about 7. Steve Edmond made the stop. Let's check in with the studio. <laughs> All right, Bob Taco Bell studio update right before halftime. Ole Miss taking on Alabama. Cyrus Jones, scoop and score. <laughs> that was well covered. Linwood on second down at about three. That's why Robert Flores is a pro, by the way. Hassan Ridgeway made the stop. And once again, Matt Millen, the horns are forced to third down. So they're playing them in a, a box inside that's considered light. So they want you to run at it. And so Texas is daring them to run. And Baylor's been taking the bait. See how they're deployed on the outside. So you have all these guys, a free safety, guys on the outside, which leaves them on the inside with one man short. And they're saying, go ahead and run it. We don't think you can do it. Our defensive front is better than your offensive front. Third down and three. Breaking play. going to be an incomplete pass. Oh, no. Didn't get to the line of scrimmage, and he's hit. I wonder if they're going to say it was uh, grounding. Caleb Blewett got the pressure on Bryce Petty. Although the quarterback was outside of the pocket, the pass did not make it to the line. Intentional grounding. Offense number 14. I would, I would, Lost him down. I would spot of the challenge foul. that. It's not going to matter. The call is the call. But here's why I would challenge it. He's being hit, and that forces the throw to be a bad throw. And he's outside. If the ball does not get to the line of scrimmage, it's messed up from the beginning with Shock Linwood, but the ball does not reach the line of scrimmage. That's why they're going to call it. All in all, that only costs Baylor about six yards, but it's another stop for Texas on defense. Here's Spencer Roth to punt, trying to change field position. 
And this is a spiraling line drive. Shipley all the way back to his own 23. Up the sideline, gets a block. Out to about the 38-yard line before he steps out. That's a good return by Jackson Shipley. Good field position again for Texas. Can they finally get points on the board? ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by your next truck, Ford F-150. Synchrony Financial. Banking, loyalty, analytics. Engage with us. And the new dollar cravings menu at Taco Bell. Live Moss. The Pennybacker Bridge bridges Lake Austin and connects the northern and southern sections of the Loop 360 Highway, also known as the capital of Texas Highway. The bridge, Matt Millen, named for Percy Pennybacker, who was a pioneer in the technology of welded structures. Do you see how much you learn when you hang out with me? Yeah, I, I did notice that, but you didn't know was he, he was a linebacker. <laughs> First and 10, Texas, at their own 36. Back to the offense, back to the air, swoops. Down the sideline, lobs one into double coverage, and he's got a connection. What a catch, splitting the DBs, John Harris. That's going to be for excessive celebration. It's a gain of 34 as the play stands. Did Harris just cost his team 15 yards? This is a well-thrown ball. <laughs> That's the only place it could have been. That's a 15-yard penalty? I, that's just speculation by me. Let's check. The flag dropped out late. The result of the play is a catch for a first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number nine for Taunton. 15-yard penalty. It's first and 10. Well, Charlie Strong is reading the riot act to John Harris. You be the judge. This is taunting after the play is over. That's, uh, he, yeah, I that's... think he's pointing first down. Maybe right. the officials thought he was pointing at the Baylor defensive back, but that's a tough call for Texas. It cost them 15 yards. Swoops on the keeper. And he gets stuffed after a gain of a half yard by Andrew Billings. Okay, so who do you have to make a play for you? If you're going to use their feet, DeJay Johnson, who's in the game right now, 2-3, that's a guy you've got to get on the edge. Now, Taylor knows that, too, so they're, they're defending it that way. They just need, they need to be able to get some consistency in this passing game. They've not been able to do it. They've got to find something. They've been running the ball pretty well, though. Play action. Swoops out on the edge. Down the sideline. Too high. Overshoots Lorenzo Joe, the true freshman. Had him. And now it's third down and nine. That's They had him. He had Joe wide open. That's a, that's a bad throw. He just Now, in that particular time, Swoops just needed to slow himself down a little bit because he had the time. You don't have to rush it. Gets his head turned around. His shoulders are nice. Now, just take your time. Coming up on the inside, but Swoops had enough time to be able to make that throw. Tyrone Swoops playing in place of David Ash, who had to retire from football. So unexpected as the starter for Texas, and now a false start. Two big penalties on this drive for Texas, hurting them badly. False start. Offense. Number 65, five-yard penalty. It's third down. So minus the taunting call, three plays ago, it should have been first and 10 for Texas at the Baylor 30-yard line. That's Marcus Hutchins right there. He's going to just give a little bit right there. And you get the taunting call and that false start costing Texas 20 yards. And a couple of failed plays on first and second down to boot. And now it's third and 14, back to midfield. Swoops, under pressure, and down he goes. Sean Oakman, sack number five this season. Penn State transfer, six foot nine, 280 pounds. Plays with very good leverage. You can see him up in the top side. Number two. 
He's got good leverage. But the thing is, they tried to keep it back into his side. That tackle, his set, was wrong. He stepped, instead of his first step being back, he stepped wide. He saw that, took the inside, the back couldn't handle it, and it's a big sack. So here's Russ to punt again, Levi Norwood to receive. Another wobbly kick, Norwood calls for a fair catch, and fields it on his knees at about the 17-yard line. Will step aside, still Baylor in a low-scoring game by a touchdown. And Matt, that was such a big part of Baylor's offense through the first several weeks of the season. Just getting into those playmakers out on the edge. And we haven't seen that element of their offense as much so far at all. And Goodley's not happy with himself. Goodley's one of the things he wanted to improve on was catching the ball with his hands consistently. And he's had a couple drops here early in the season. Like rocket 10. Here comes the blitz. Petty on the slant. He's able to beat the blitz for a first down. KD Cannon, the true freshman who came into today, averaging just under 130 yards per game, number five in America. He'll go vertical. They'll both come inside. It's usually the second man to the inside. Petty under pressure, just unloads. It'll be second down and 10. Goodley may have been the intended receiver, but it seemed like Petty just wanted to get rid of that one. Choose. One of the things that this Baylor team does is they make the decision of run pass in the middle of the play. It's really, it's all, it's, it's Art Browse is designed. He's been doing it for a long time. But they haven't, they haven't messed up right now. A straight pass there from Petty. Misses Antoine Goodley again. So now it's third down and 10. Do you have any other offensive examples, other teams you've seen, where they make that snap decision in the middle of the play? Yeah, the, uh, Oregon does some of it, but this team is cutting edge. This team, and right now, that edge has been pretty blunt because Texas played it really well. It's a combination of Texas playing well and then being just a pad off. And they get another third down stop. Baylor is only three for 10 on third down. Again, the play clock runs down. Only a three man rush. Petty still under pressure, escapes the pocket. Cut down. Perfect. That's exactly what they wanted to do. This is really a good job by Charlie Strong's defense. Exactly what they want him to do. They're going to rush three. They're going to drop eight. They're going to take away the throws. Now we want you to either dump it down underneath or run. He chooses the latter, and Edmonds finishes it off. Off and runs. All you have to do is beat one guy, and they did it. How 
big have special teams been in this game. The only touchdown scored on special teams. And now a first set of downs and shot Linwood. Now maybe Texas with their defense suffering a little bit of a body blow, thinking they got to stop, having to go right back out on the field. That's a Baylor first down. This is when you have to tighten your belt. You're one of those defensive linemen. Hold the edge and take away the inside. Great football though by Baylor. You get a very good change of momentum play. They go quick. Here's Penny. Floating it up the side. Walking into the end zone. Antoine Goodley for the Bears touchdown. Thompson's eyes were in the backfield. And Penny put the ball right past him. of the day on special teams for Baylor. They blocked the field goal for a touchdown in the first half. They called a fake punt and Spencer Roth makes it pay off here in the third quarter. And to cap a 10-play touchdown drive, Bryce Petty, Antoine Goodley. 16th touchdown for Goodley, and it's 14-0. There's the anatomy of a touchdown right here. Bryce Petty sees he is a middle safety, and he's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. So he knows he's trying to hold inside leverage. He has one guy to beat, Goodley. So he sets it up. Once those eyes come back inside, the safety can't get there. Now, Petty knew it from the start. Now, watch him give the signal to Goodley on the outside. I'm coming to you. That's one-on-one. -on -one. I trust my receiver. The ball's coming to you. Makes it look easy, don't they, Shoes? They're a good combination as Bryce Petty with his eighth touchdown pass of the season. Antoine Goodley, that's his first touchdown reception of the 16th of his career. So Texas now in a two-score hole. And in case you missed it, video of that touchdown is now posted on the Sports Center app. Available on your mobile devices or tablets whenever you're in need. And now let's see how the Young quarterback for Texas, Tyrone Swoops. And a Longhorn group responds. They got all the way down inside the one-yard line before halftime. They fumbled the ball, couldn't punch it in. Now midway through the third quarter, they're coming off of a drive where they threw a deep ball and got to the Baylor 30-yard line, but then shot themselves in the foot again, this time with penalties. They've moved the ball at times, Matt. They just have had a critical error at the most crucial point in these drives, and it has kept them scoreless. Yes, Swoops, that's a backwards pass. And Gray's bottled up, and does well just to get across the 25 and maybe pick up about two yards. So it will be second down and eight. That I guess that surprised me the most is that uh, Texas's offensive line has played well enough to establish a pretty decent run game. They were running the football on this Baylor defense pretty well. I think they, they need to continue to do that. Texas has run for 107 yards. <laughs> Swoops on second and eight, up the street. Sliding catch is made, first down. The tight end, Jeff Swain. And now they'll say incomplete. On the far side of the field, the official comes in and waves it off. It'll be third down and eight. Terrell Burt knew it before the officials did. Swain has position on him. That looks like a catch. And now no, the ball comes no, out at late. At the end, it comes out late. That looks like a good call. You have to complete the process of the catch all the way through. This has resulted in a conference, but by definition, doesn't he need to roll over with possession yeah. of that football in All order for that through. to be a completed catch? The ruling on the field is a completed catch. First down. Now that's an overrule. 
And now you wonder if they might go upstairs to review just to let Leroy on the field of a completed pass is under further review. And Reggie Smith beat me to it. He will go to the replay booth and they will take another look. You're not as fast as you used to be, Shoes. I mean, I'm getting old as well. <laughs> That's Matt Millen. I'm Bob with Shoes. And Quint Kesnick is with us here as well. And this is a huge call. I mean, for a Texas offense that has had some problems making big plays, this is a chunk play. This is a 25 yard reception if it stands up. But would you say that by definition, this is completing the process of the catch? I would say no. There's the catch. Now he has to complete it all the way through, and that's where he loses it. But see, right there, he calls it. You see the back judge? He calls it a catch right away. After further review, the pass is incomplete. There it is. Incomplete pass. It'll be Texas ball, third down and eight from the 27-yard line. Here's the rule. If a player goes to the ground in the act of catching a pass, he must maintain complete and continuous control of the ball throughout the process of contacting the ground. So by definition, he did not do that. And that is a good overrule. And now it's third down and eight. And lost in that was a nice throw by Swoops. Really nice throw. Nice protection also. Texas is four for ten on third down. Four-man rush. He's got some protection. Looks like he'll take off and run. Tries to keep the play alive. Gets a block but won't get the first down. Xavier Howard came up and made the stop. And the Texas offense can't move the chains. They're going to have to kick it away. Howard's played a nice game here today. Good on the outside with the coverage. When they've asked him to have to make a tackle, he's done that. Nice protection. Nothing down the field, or at least some, nothing that he can see. Howard there to finish that off on swoops. It looks like this group for Baylor is guarding against a fake punt by Texas. You wonder if at some point Charlie Strong feels the need to pull the trigger on a trick play. Instead, it's a soaring, spiraling kick and a good one from William Russ. Chases Levi Norwood all the way back inside his own 15, and then he gets chased inside the 10. Let's check in with Robert Flores. All right, Taco Bell Studio update. Ole Miss is trailing to Alabama, but all they have to do is bowl leave. Bo Wallace to Laquan Treadwell. They've cut to lead the 14 to 10 in the third. All right, Robert, thanks very much. There were flags thrown on the punt, a 52-yarder by William Russ. Here's the call. Personal foul, kicking team. Number 96, hitting a player who was out of the play. At the distance to the goal, Baylor keeps the ball, first and 10. I wouldn't be half the distance to the goal if it's a penalty on the kicking team. Yeah, I was a little corn-fused there. If that's on Texas. Correction. That foul was on the receiving team. There you go. For hitting a player. That makes sense, and that's Byron Bonds called for the foul. So that's going to put the ball down close to the Baylor five-yard line. Well, this has been all on the Texas defense today. They've allowed one touchdown to arguably the most lethal offense in college football. And now they've got Baylor backed up, but their offense hasn't put anything on the board. Bryce Petty goes back to work from his own five-yard line. All of that means nothing right now. They need to be their best right here. Shot Linwood to the left of Petty. They'll take the handoff. Busts through to about the 15-yard line. That's a gain of close to nine. Peter Jenkins on the tackle for the horns, but it will be second down and about a half yard. Well, they're leaving the middle of the field open. If you get past that second level, Chuck Linwood is out off to the right races. There he goes again. Here he goes. Chuck Linwood with two quick carries, and it's from the five-yard line out to the 24-yard line as we check in with play. Great day to tempo is what Art Browse was telling us guys as his third quarter was starting as they were stretching coming out of the locker room. He said a little bit of warmth in the air, guys. Great day to tempo. And they haven't had that opportunity yet because of the lack of success maybe on this drive. You can start to see them put play to play to play together. Linwood again. 
He's got about five more, and two, you're down there on the Texas sideline. We wanted to know, as this game went on, how that front seven, endurance-wise, would handle the game for Texas. What do you see? Are they starting to breathe a little heavy? Yeah, a little bit of hands on hips. They're starting to breathe a little heavy. I think just being discouraged with the lack of success that their own offense has, has shown today. Linwood just shot the first down, so it will be third down, it looks like, in about a foot. Unless they mark the ball closer to our yellow line. Let's see. Doesn't look like they've given them the first down yet, so it will be third down and short. The shoe's lost in all this. Is this offensive line for Baylor is starting to take over that off of uh, the, the line of scrimmage. Well, Linwood's now over 100 yards rushing. And now whistles stop play before the snap. The ruling on the field was a first down. Now they change it to a first down. It certainly didn't seem as if there was any demonstrative signal from any of the officials on the field saying first down. But it's a fresh set of downs for Baylor at their own 34. Texas is getting tired, especially in the middle. Now it's Johnny Jefferson. And a tailback. That's Ridgeway. He needs to. Screen is dropped by Corey Coleman. So that's a gift for Texas. No gain on first down, second and ten. All of these weapons are now coming back as well for Baylor. They get Levi Norwood back today to go along with all the receivers they got back over the last couple of weeks. Right up the middle goes Johnny Jefferson. Second down, gain of about seven, maybe eight yards, so it's third and short again. Yeah, they came with a blitz on the inside. And it was picked up, and because of the patience of uh, um, Justin, he, he was able to just make a miss inside. Good patience. Bryce Petty is stopped. On third down and short. He's at least a yard or two shy. So a successful drive for Baylor in that they've changed field position. They get from their own five-yard line out close to midfield. They will have to punt. It's another stop by the Texas defense. But once again, Matt, it's this kind of game. You don't expect Baylor to be in these kinds of games. It's a field position game, though, and now they'll make Texas go the long field again. And Texas is doing what they wanted to do. I mean, essentially, they've held them to seven points. Their offense needs to put some points on the board, or they need to get a return here. They're coming after the kick. Almost blocked it. It's a wobbly kick. Shipley forced into a fair catch at about the 17. Well, it's time now for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. How many teams from the state of Texas are currently in the top 25 FBS rankings for total defense? That's a pretty good question because you think about AM, you think about Texas, obviously, Baylor teams that in this conference, certainly in AM, I mean, how prolific has their offense at times been? But normally think about the real good defenses they have here in the Lone Star State, but we've seen two good defenses on display today. Very good. Not no one's going to think about that one. <laughs> yeah. Gray, up the middle. Six yards on first down. Oakman made the tackle. That's what they need to do. They need to be patient with their running game. And that first down's a big deal. So now they're second and four. That's very manageable. That's what they wanted to do all game long. They got away from it a little bit in the last couple series. Now they're hopefully they're back to it. Texas came into today with 26% of their rush attempts this year going for either zero or negative yards. 94th in FBS. That has not been the story today. Right up the middle. The hole opens. Out to the 40-yard line goes Jonathan Gray. Xavier Howard made the stop. That's a gain of 17 more. 136 yards rushing now for Texas. Watch Rollison right in the middle. And they're putting somebody on him. And he just does a perfect job of taking him. They went with a slant. Rollison does a nice job of using his momentum against him. It's well done. That's Billings on the inside, too. Lansing to Swoops. Under pressure. Keeps the play alive. Forces it down the sideline and incomplete. Yeah, that's, okay, 
This goes back to a scramble, and it's the scramble rules. And if you're deep, you come short. If you're short, you go deep. The deep receiver, he came back to the ball. Swoops tries to help to go deep. You're going to see he's going to beat this the defender. Now he's pointing down the field, but by rule, you must come back to the ball. He tries to force us to an end. That was not a good decision. Yeah, that might have been a throwaway for a more veteran quarterback lived to fight another day. Yeah. And Terrell Burke was right there in coverage. Second down and 10. Swoops over the middle, snaps, and almost intercepted. Great read by Taylor Young. The redshirt freshman dropped back deep middle and almost got the pick. It'll be third down and 10. He was trying to get the swaim in the middle. So they're, they're leaving the middle of this defense a little open. But that's just well defended. He's able to get his hand on the ball. Is only three. Swoops over the middle. No threat. And a bad one. And accurate. And now Texas is 0 for 4 on third down in this half. Some pushing and shoving after the play. And a good job by Sean Oakman to separate Andrew Billings and avoid a post-play foul. The difference with Baylor to me when you watch them is this defensive. They have, they have some good defensive lines. If this isn't just an inexperienced young quarterback struggling, this is a good defense that Baylor has. You, you talked about it all week. <laughs> Levi Norwood makes the fair catch at the 24. Time now to answer our Aflac trivia question. Aflac! How many teams from the state of Texas are currently in the top 25 FBS rankings for total defense? And the answer is five, the most of any state. TCU, Baylor, who we've been talking about, a really good defense. North Texas, Houston, and Texas. And both of the defensive numbers for these teams only getting better today. Final minute of play here in the third quarter. Almost dead even in total yards, but a special teams touchdown and a special teams momentum changer, the big plays today for Baylor. Petty, long throw to the sideline, incomplete, right through the hands of Antoine Goodley. You wonder if the sun might have gotten in his eyes. Normally, when you watch this Baylor offense, they love to take advantage of seams. There's the sun that Woodley was, Woodley was looking into. And I think you might be right. That was, although it went through his hand. Last right up the middle for six yards, though, on second down. Sets up a manageable third down and four. Bryce Petty tried to hit, hit, hit these seams at all. Confusion for Texas defensively. No, 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 that official's right there. That's what he should be doing because Baylor, they, they made some changes, and so they must allow Texas to match the change. So Texas allowed the substitute. Clock down to 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Play clock at five. Play clock's at two. Here comes the blitz. Petty under pressure. He'll be set. And that will end the third quarter. They've been blitzing Edmund all game long. This That's how he got the there. end of the third quarter. He can't play any better against the great offense of your Texas. But they're down by two scores going to the fourth quarter. A defensive battle will return to Austin, Texas, following these messages. And a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. teams has been the story for Baylor. This is the first half. The only touchdown scored in the first half. Blocked field goal taken the distance by Terrell Burt. And then the second touchdown drive. And not the only offensive touchdown that Baylor has scored. Kept alive by the fake punt. So you get this high-powered offense. You got to play good defense. And 
everybody seems to be checking the box and they get to special teams and there's the difference in the game which just goes to show you have to play all three phases of the game hey, if Baylor holds on and wins there will be some out there that will want to use this win as a knock against them well look they didn't put big numbers up offensively good for them for playing this type of game the game that's necessary on the road to win Jackson Shipley cut down to the 34 yard line and we will head back to the studio and check in with Robert all right, Bob, in Fort Worth, TCU pulls even with Oklahoma. Trayvon Boykin, Deontay Gray ties it at 31, third quarter. Baylor will play TCU next week at home in Waco. Coming up tonight on ABC, his name, Amir Abdullah, and he's one of the best running backs in the country. Number 19, Nebraska, taking on number 10, Michigan State, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. That game could be a slugfest as well. Back to the offense again, Texas, still looking for some points. And they will lose a yard on first down as Malcolm Brown is shut down. And the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup heads to the contender round. 12 nations battle, eight advance. Brad Keselowski won at Chicago, Joey Logano, New Hampshire, Jeff Gordon at the Monster Mile at Dover. It's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Kansas, presented by Dodge tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Now Texas will play with some tempo, swoops off a play-action fake, tucks it under and runs. Gets to the sideline, out of bounds at about the 37. So he picked up four on the scramble, it will be third down and seven. But down two scores, Texas now the team that's forced to play with a bit of tempo and try and keep the clock on their side. Keep your eyes right there. Here comes the blitz. Swoops off his back foot. Incomplete. The blitz got the job done. Trayvon Blanchard came untouched, and he buried Swoops just as he got rid of the football. Well, and Howard on the outside had great coverage because he came free, and there's the ball. But watch Howard. He's had Howard has played well all game long. I'm, I'm really impressed with him. You know, he's being mentored by Chris Dishman, the former Houston Oilers. And he's over there helping this Baylor team, and you can see the difference in these corners. As soon as you put the tape on, you can see the difference. Levi Norwood up against the sideline, calls for a fair catch, but the ball floats out of bounds. 13.52 to go in the fourth quarter. Baylor shutting out Texas, 14-0. If you have not been to Austin, treat yourself to a trip because this is about as pretty as it gets in the state of Texas. A terrific town. What a weekend as well as you've got home football here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Also, Austin City Limits, a huge music festival taking over the town this weekend. It's just a great weekend. And beautiful weather expected. And it has been beautiful play by both defenses for the most part in this game. To the offense, there's Bryce Petty up the middle. Robert Schusen alongside Matt Millen, Quint Kesnick down on the sideline. And Quint, be interesting to see now on that Baylor sideline if they start to slow the tempo down and milk the clock. Absolutely not the way Kendall Bryles just signaled in this next play. I mean, there was no hesitation, no huddle, no muddle huddle. They're off to the races. There goes Shaq Linwood off to the races, out to the 40 yard line. So much of what they do is pace. And so much of what they do is rhythm. And sometimes when you slow a team down deliberately, you lose that rhythm. And so I think they still want to put another 20 points on the board here if they can. Petty to throw. Long throw to the sideline. Incomplete. It does do Texas a favor, though, because the way this game has gone, if you just play field position, it feels like Texas couldn't score two touchdowns against that Baylor defense if we played for five days, right. much less for another 13 minutes. But if you're throwing the football and you're snapping it with 25 seconds on the play clock, you're giving Texas extra possessions that they might not get. Here's a run, and Jenny Jefferson picks up a first down. If you keep getting first downs, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Well, that, I think, is your superior football strategic yeah, mind at work, knowing that if you keep running for 11 yards at a clip, that's good. I learn a lot of football hanging out with you. There goes Jefferson again. Breaking tackles down to the 32. We 
said at the start of the game, this is still going to come down to how much depth Texas has. Because we saw it on film, they got tired as the game went on. We saw it the last couple weeks in the fourth quarter. They're not the same team. Jefferson inside the 30 with a gain of four. And even a field goal here would make it a three-possession game with 12 and a half minutes to go. Three points for Baylor on this drive is probably as good as seven. It all but ends the game. Texas has to get a stop. They need a turnover right here. Linwood. It'll be third down. Steve Edmond made the stop. Third down and three. Edmond has had himself a pretty good football game here today. He's been pretty active. They blitzed him quite a bit. Gonna have to make a play right here as well. Linwood up the middle, and that is a huge first down for Ben. Into the red zone to the Texas 19-yard line. And Edmund had an opportunity to be able to make it, didn't get it done. They're tired up front. Linwood again, into the secondary. It's first and goal for them. Impressed with how patient Bryce Petty is with this running game. They're, they're, they have something, they're going right back to it. Shot Linwood again, inside the five. Linwood on the carry. Down to about the four-yard line. At the end of this game, if it turns out to be a Baylor victory, Bryce Petty won't have put Heisman numbers up, and yet you look at this as a winning quarterback playing winning football, taking what's given. He's done that today. Linwood to the goal line. Is he in? Linwood on the carry. And this might be the game for Texas. Mark down at the one, or it will be third and goal. And they'll line up to go quick again. Linwood to the right of Petty on third and goal. Shot Linwood leaps over the pile. Touchdown, Baylor. That's a tired defense right there. That's where Pace made a difference. And so to go back to answer your question from the start, I think and I believe that when they are in there, when they have that rhythm, you can't break the rhythm. I think they're better with it and they feel better about it. Well, certainly if the end of the drive produces a touchdown, you can't second guess the decision to keep on going quick. Right. And that's what Baylor did. And now it's 21 to nothing. It was that drive for the Bears. They marched right down the field. Pretty much all on the ground. Shock Linwood caps it. And Art Riles knows it. This team is now in control. ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. AT&T, mobilizing your world. And Buick, five expectation-shattering models. Another reason to experience the new Buick. For those of you just joining us, welcome to a spectacular day here in Austin, but it has been anything but for the Longhorn offense. Their defense has hung in as well as could be expected against Shock Linwood and the Baylor Bears, but too much Baylor offense eventually overwhelming Texas here in the second half. It's now a three-possession game. Bob Schusen alongside Matt Millen, Quint Kesnick down on the field as well, and Baylor about to kick it back to Texas. But now they're up by three touchdowns. Returnable kick from about the three. Two times. Runs into a wall shot of the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And Matt Millen, this game, the biggest story, at least up until that last touchdown drive by Baylor. Two big plays on special teams for the Bears that gave them the momentum for their first two scores. And kept them in the game, gave them a little bit of uh, a life throughout the game. 
and when they fake with, with the fake punt, I think that, that's what changed the whole game. You can live with that one block kick that gets returned for a touchdown. That's You can overcome that. That second one, when they faked the kick and kept the drive going and then punched it in, that was, to me, that's the difference in this game. And, of course, the fumble right before halftime by Texas inside the one-yard line. Play action here for Tyrone Swoops. A low throw that's scooped up by Jeff Swain for a gain of six, but Texas with only two timeouts, and the clock working against them has to go no huddle. Texas also had the opportunity at the end of the first half to get, a, get on the board. They fumbled it on the half-yard line, and that was just brutal. Jonathan Gray dropped for a big loss of about five. Now it's third down and long. And again, for the audience that just joined us, that sequence before halftime, it was Texas getting a goal line stand. They shut Baylor down inside their own one-yard line. On a fourth down and goal stop at the goal line, they go 98 and a half yards the other way. And with 25 seconds to go in the first half, it looks like they're going to tie the game at seven at halftime. And Tyrone Swoops fumbled the exchange. Swoops up the sideline, and Ja'Cory Warwick, his head was not turned, and now you think they might be compelled to go for it on fourth down, but again, here's the play right before halftime. This changed the whole game, the fumbled exchange, and rather than it being 7-7 seven, seven at halftime, it was still 7-0 Baylor, and Texas has really not come close to getting on the board since, and they will punt here. Now, it'll be a false start against the Horns. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense, number 26. Five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. Charlie Strong has his work cut out for him. He needs depth, but they're a better team now than they were a year ago. They're better on defense. They were, they were delivered a blow with the uh, with the quarterback and Ash being hurt and it, having to play swoops before he's really ready. But I like it. I like Charlie Strong. I, big fan. Norwood to the 40. So good field position for Baylor when we return. And they can work the clock with a three touchdown lead. College football continues tonight. ESPN. Battles in the SEC and Pac-12. We start in the SEC. Football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, LSU and Auburn, then at 10.30 Eastern, Utah and UCLA. Both games live on Watch ESPN. And important games tonight in both of those conferences. And what a shakeup we'll have already in the top 25 with some of the teams that have already gone down. As Devin Chafin carries for five yards. Oregon losing on Thursday night. Texas A&M loses today. Stanford right now battling with Notre Dame. And that's a close game. And now we've got an injured Longhorn on the play. That's Dalton Santos down. Officials timeout for an injured player. He's the backup inside linebacker. Shaken up on the play. So it will be second down and five after the injury timeout. But Matt, talking about this game in perspective for Baylor with their season and what's to come. Now, they still have the best that the Big 12 has to offer out in front of them. They'll have a game with Oklahoma. They'll play Oklahoma State. They've got some tough games coming. But if you're going to run the table, if you're going to win another conference championship and make it to the playoff, every game can't be, you know, 60 to 30. At some point, you have to win games where it's a defensive struggle. And they've got four ranked teams coming up on their schedule. That's going to be no bargain with TCU next week. So... I'm very impressed, I think, with how they've played today, this style of game, which isn't normally in their wheelhouse. Nothing speaks louder than for a team to not play their best and still win. And when that happens, you have a real team. Chafin again, about a yard shy of the first down. And I thought that Texas, Texas played probably as well as they could. Defensively, yeah. certainly better than they probably expected to play. And, uh, and, and Baylor, Baylor took it, 
and was able to get to the edge all game long. This missing of which, that he does just that to get a first down. Yeah, that little piece right there, that's going to be a difference with his offense as it goes forward. Petty now can run. He's more comfortable running. He feels healthy. You know, he had that he had that transverse process break, and now he's he looks like he's he's back. Yeah, when you hear two fractured vertebrae in your back. That sounds like such a scary injury, but talking to some of the folks at Baylor, not nearly as bad of an injury as it was made to sound. Another handoff to Chafin up the middle, inside the 40. Hugh, you're down there. You know, I guess from talking to some of the Baylor folks, that Petty doesn't really need much more than a little extra midsection protection, and he's okay? You know, it's just a matter of pain management during the week. And initially, there were some spasms and some bruising uh, around his spine. But now all he wears is just an extra, extra pad on his lower back. There was only one play today where I thought he came up a little slow. He got twisted around early in the third quarter as Chafin takes this one off the right tackle. Otherwise, he's looked fine. Uh, I think what stands out, Matt, about him, you know, we talked about Blake Bortles last year. Petty's big in person. He he, he's a good 6'3". You see the lower body strength that we saw from Taysom Hill and BYU. He takes a pounding, and, and I think he shows a real nose for, for the end zone in, in the red zone. Yeah, he's built kind of like a tight end who can throw the football. The thing that really sets him apart, he's got a very good offensive mind. He sees what you're supposed to see, and he makes the decisions, some, uh, you know, very quickly. Talk about taking what the defense gives you as well. That's the 55th run of the day for Baylor against 19 throws. So, so you're going to say, okay, we're going to take this away from the outside. We're going to undercut your slot receivers. We're going to force you to run. And they're going to say, okay, we'll run. We'll take it 55 times. We're patient, proving that our Browns has another uh, piece to it because most guys love to throw, who love to throw it around, they, they get impatient. 55 times is showing patience. And now they work the clock with the play clock down inside of 10. And they throw it up the seam, almost intercepted. A little misdirection, and they take a shot. It'll be third down and eight at the 30. Petty would like to have that one back because he had the open receiver. He didn't set his feet. That's the difference in the throw. And it took off from him. Petty is only... 6 of 20 for 81 yards, but one of those throws a touchdown on the drive kept alive by the fake punt. That time he couldn't find Trayvon Armstead, so it's third down and eight. And now he's using all the clock. He wants the deep ball for Goodwin. Lays out, can't make the catch. Now it's fourth down. And this might not be field goal range for Baylor. They've got a walk-on kicker in Chris Callahan. He's only one for six this year. He made a 23-yarder on opening day and has not made one since. So fourth down and eight. Rather than try a 47-yard field goal, our Riles leaves his offense on the field. Well, with 10, you saw it put it out to 10 personnel. So one back and no tight ends. So they're going five wide receivers. Don't be surprised if they spread them out and take the quarterback and quarterback draw. Instead, Petty looks for the end zone on fourth down. And it is a catch and a touchdown. Corey Coleman has the lead for Baylor. What a throw by Bryce Petty on fourth down. The coverage is right there. That ball could only be one spot. And Petty put it right there. Good protection. The ball has enough height. It kind of hangs a little bit. But that's a that's pretty good coverage. The ball just drops in. That's a great throw. He hasn't had many highlight plays today, but now two touchdowns. And barely squeezes over 100 yards throwing. Up to 111 yards. There's the point after, and it's 28 nothing. Baylor on top. Texas defense could only hold the game together for so long. And Baylor taking over here in the second half.
dancing on the Bears' sideline, and it's 28-0 as number seven has come into Austin, and it looks almost certain that the Bears are going to beat the Horns for the fourth time in the last five years. Texas leads this series coming into today, 74-25-4. But this is now a changing of the guard, and Baylor is now a very big thorn in the side of not only Texas, but the Big 12. Deontay Freeman, Armonte Foreman, a couple of freshmen back deep to receive the kick that will bounce. Oh, he almost stepped out of bounds. He's got nowhere to go. Cristela Alonso is one of the country's top comics to watch, and you can when Cristela premieres right after Last Man Standing, Friday, October 10 at 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC. Bob Susan, Matt Dillon, Quinn Kesnick here in Austin. Texas's defense held in for as long as they could, but... For this group taking the field right now, Matt, it's been a long, frustrating afternoon. They really had one significant drive. They haven't been shut out since 2004. And it was right before halftime on the fumble down at the one-yard line that Texas missed their one real chance to score. Yeah, it's about opportunity and timing, and they had both, and they blew it. Let's head back to the studio, and Robert. All right, Bob, update from Fort Worth. Check out TCU's Paul Dawson. The pick six, but on the ensuing point after touchdown, Oklahoma blocked it, returned it. That's a two-point conversion. So the Horn Frogs lead 37-33, early fourth quarter. We are inside of six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and here's another not so spectacular note for Texas fans. The last time the Horns were shut out at home, November 6th, 1976. It's been 38 years. I believe it was in November 6th, 1976. Matt Millen's 40th birthday. <laughs> a little great. Thank you. That's a Texas first down on the ground. Stops the clock for a moment. Just joining us, welcome to Austin. 28-0 Baylor over Texas. And a frustrating day for the Texas offense continues on the Tyrone Swoops throwaway. Bob and Matt Millen, and Quinn Kesnick. And we have watched Baylor score on special teams. They fake a punt that sets up their second score. And now their run game has really taken over here, Matt, in the second half. Yeah, and they, they so they dared them to run the football, and they responded by by running it for 58 times or 57 times. Swoops reduced to just lobbing it down the sideline. Uh, this is not good. And flags thrown. The intended receiver was John Harris. Tyrone Swoops has skills, but he's got a really steep learning curve, and he has a pass interference. Defense number four. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. They played for a small high school, a yeah. 2A high school here in Texas, white right high. Now, he, during his high school career, threw for 41 touchdowns, ran for 71 touchdowns. But in talking to the coaching staff, they talked about how raw he was because of the small school that he played at and why. And so, sometimes what happens when you have a high school kid who's that good, they just leave him alone. They leave him alone because he's so much better, you don't want to mess him up. This is what he's capable of. It's a big run for Swoops in a first down. But I guess when you're the biggest, the fastest, and the strongest, sure. you don't necessarily have to coach. You're like Fezzik. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help I'm the biggest and the fastest and the strongest. 16 yards for Princess, Tyrone Swoops. Princess Bride, I'm dating myself. You've done that all afternoon. Thank you very much. Brown weaves his way for about four. So you're right, you get this kind of a lump of clay if you're Tyrone Swoops and the Charlie Strong coaching staff, and you're trying to mold him as best you can. But he's forced in there because of David Ash being hurt and now having to quit football. So they never expected that Tyrone Swoops this season was going to be the starting quarterback the whole year. Run, 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 run. 
as up the middle goes Brown. And how deep do you think this playbook is for Texas? And Shallow. what what portion of it can Tyrone Swoops right now handle? Well, it's so probably in a hundred page book, they're probably using maybe 25, maybe a quarter of their offense. I mean, and it's not only Tyrone Swoops, and it's not because he can't learn it. It's just what you can handle in a finite time. You're trying to force feed him everything. Here's a bullet thrown by Swoops. And Marcus Johnson gets Texas back inside the red zone as the Horns at least try to put some points on the board before the game's over. That's a gain of 18. The shoes, they also have the problem with that offensive line. It's new, it's young, it's reshuffled. They're trying to cobble that thing together. They're trying to protect the young quarterback who they're trying to force feed a playbook. It's, it's not an easy job to do. And you're going up against a really good defense. Yeah. The Baylor's good. Bobbing and weaving his way as Jonathan Gray inside the 15. This is a defense, I think, for Baylor that so much of the attention for the Bears, and rightfully so, they put up gaudy offensive numbers, goes their way. But then you get in a game like this, and you learn the guys on the defensive side of the ball for the Bears, they're every bit capable of carrying their team to a win or two. That's the difference that you could see from two years ago to now, or even last year to now. This is a very capable defense. Swoops to the pylon and complete, looking for Marcus Johnson. So here's what's to come for Texas. They've got the Red River game next week against Oklahoma. They still have road games in Manhattan and Lubbock and also Stillwater. And the Longhorn Network is going to carry the Iowa State game on October 18th, so you can tune in for that one there. Third down. Swing pass, wide open, Jonathan Gray. And he gets shut down. We've seen sideline to sideline pursuit of times for the Baylor defense, and that time it was Colin Brantz, a three-year walk-on, who was just put on scholarship this past summer. Yeah, that's a good story. And he's a good little player. He played special teams for three years. Then Phil Bennett was saying, well, we got to get him in the game. Watch him make all these plays in practice. It becomes the starting nickel. Fourth down, and Texas obviously the go for it. Swoops to the end zone, and there's a play. Jeff Swain was tackled by Terrell Burt. Swain had him beat. That, that could have been six right there. Actually, Burt does a nice job of not getting him the score. Pass interference, defense number 13. The ball will be placed at the two yard line, automatic first down. We've only had one other time in the game and it was right before halftime that Texas got down this deep with a chance to score. They fumbled going in at the half. That was when it was a game. Now they just want to avoid the shot and they will. Jonathan Gray with the touchdown. So you're going to look at this score. And you're going to say, okay, it's going to be 28-7. There's a lot of positives for Texas to take out of this game. There's a lot of positives for, for Baylor defensively and offensively with their patience. But there's some things that Texas can build on. They're going to be small victories, but they're victories nonetheless. Their running game... This offensive line, I thought, got a little bit better in this game today against a pretty darn good defensive front. A tough throw to find moral victories for Texas when they're down 28-7 to their in-state rival. He's away. He's not afraid to be patient and run the ball 55 to 58 times. Texas going to the outside. Chance. It is loose. Picked up. And almost busting free was Bryce Hager. He's brought down at the Texas 30-yard line with 2.11 to go. Now, Art Bryles has taken a program that had 11 total Big 12 wins in the 12 years before he took over. And in the six years since he's taken over, they've won four bowl games. They've won 26 games in conference. They won the Big 12 for the first time last year. And look at the talent disparity. 
12 years pre-Briles, three players go to the NFL. In the six years since he's been in Waco, 19 players have been drafted. The thing that is most impressive about our Browse is this. He coached in high school for over 20 years. He knows these high school coaches down here in Texas. He's one of them. And so the biggest thing, I asked him, what did he learn? What was the big, biggest lesson he learned? And he said, it's this. When that kid walks through the door, you got to coach him. And you have to do what he can do, not what you want him to do. So you're not, you're not recruiting players to your system. It's a high school. Whoever comes into the high school, his abilities are what they are. And having said that, he will enjoy now the fruits of his labor. And by that, I mean he's going to be able to get, he, he can handpick kids. This staff does a great job, led by Art, of developing his players. And not a lot of staffs do that. He does a great job of developing. Jason bounces it left. And let's head back to the studio and check in with Robert. All right, Bob, check out what's happened in two different games. First, Ole Miss pulling even with Alabama. Bo Wallace to Vince Sanders. Ole Miss then recovered a fumble. They're now driving for a go-ahead score. Meantime, at South Bend, Stanford's rebound right. Go-ahead score with three minutes to go. Cardinal are leading 14 to 10 over the Irish. Wow, by the time this day is over, Imagine if you got a weekend like this after that committee is already forming to start figuring out who, <laughs> who belongs in that 14th playoff. Baylor could find themselves in a very interesting position after all is said and done today. And stepping out of bounds close to a first down is Devin Chafin. So it will be fourth down and a yard, it looks like. And if Baylor picks up the first down, the game is all but over. So a slow start for the Baylor Bears, but they did what they had to do, and they won it in a way that they're not known to win. They ran the football, they stayed patient, they played very good defense, and they put up a W. And on fourth down and one, they get stopped. So Texas showing a little bit of pride on defense. Gets the takeaway. And the turnover on downs. So with 38 seconds to go, they'll send their offense back out on the field one last time. And the fans that remain here in Austin are actually giving a hand to that defense as they come off the field. These are smart football fans, and they know what that defense was up against today and that for a long time, Matt, in this game, that defense did all it possibly could just to keep hopes alive, waiting for the offense to score. But with a makeshift offensive line and a young quarterback, Texas couldn't get anything going and never mounted a serious threat offensively. Well, and then you had the special teams gaffe and the turnover on the goal line. That's the biggest thing. That turnover, that punt, when they, that fake punt, that changed the game. Yep. Jonathan Gray picks up eight. They got themselves an outstanding coach in our trials. A legendary high school coach. And a pick at midfield as Tyrone Swoops is intercepted by Ryan Stewart for the second time. Stewart's down the sideline inside the 10, and he is stopped at about the 7 with one second left on the clock. And a flag down. Art Bryles is already on his way across the field. It looks like to shake the hand of Charlie Strong, but there's still a second on the clock. I'm not sure if the officials realize there's one second to go in a game that's long since been decided. We could probably just make the penalty call and allow the coaches to congratulate each other. Ah, oh, you're killing me, shoes. <laughs> by both teams. Number 82 for Texas was covered up. It was not the end on the line. That's an eligible downfield.
The penalty is declined after the interception and during the return. Illegal block in the back, intercepting team number 84. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Baylor keeps the ball, first and 10. And after the Magna Carta is read <laughs> by Reggie Smith, our referee, <laughs> one knee will all be all that is necessary for Baylor to celebrate a trip back to Waco with a 28-7 win. The Magna Carta, huh? I the was Declaration there. of Independence. I was there. I think you were a signer, aren't you? I was. Correction. The foul for the block in the back was also against Texas and is declined. First and goal, Baylor. So now the Bears can simply, after all is said and done, run one last play. And Bryce Petty takes a D and that'll do it. So Art Bryles, for the fourth time in the last five years, beats Texas. And Baylor gets the job done on the road. Matt Miller, they were at times, certainly offensively not at their best. But as we said, to run the table, to be in a 14 playoff, to win a championship, not every game's going to be pretty. And so you start going to say, if you don't play your best game, you still win. That's a good football team. Let's go down to Quinn. Coach, congratulations. You block a field goal, you return it for a touchdown, and you call a fake punt. What impact did special teams have on this win? Well, I, I would say pretty big. You know, uh, I think Texas did a good job today. You know, came out, played a lot of spirit. Our guys are extremely proud of them. We've been on the road at three different venues three weeks in a row. I think we're the only Power 5 conference university to do it. They play at three different home sides. And to come out of this stretch with three victories, it's a huge testament to our football team. They, they gave you a light run box. What were your options? Well, I mean, I, we don't feel like we ran the ball that well. You know, we certainly messed up the first half not getting a score in there. Uh, but we made enough big plays to, you know, keep the game live. I thought the defense did outstanding. Yeah, you shot them out for 58 minutes. How do you best describe what they were able to do? I mean, we, we played well. You know, we, we got a good football team. Good football teams play well. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. They certainly do have a good football team. They've got a terrific head coach, and it's a good win for Baylor on the road. 28-7 over Texas. Coming up at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. The first meeting of AP-ranked Big Ten teams this season. Number 19, Nebraska. Number 10, Michigan State. Again, the final. Baylor by three touchdowns, 28-7 over Texas. So long from Austin.